I love you, Microsoft and Asobo, but for the love, please, please stop resetting our graphics settings after every major update. Welcome back, sim fans, especially you flight sim fans out there. I wanted to give an update and post on something that's been very annoying and frustrating. And I'm guessing some of you or most of you know this happens after a major update to Microsoft Flight Simulator. But for those that don't, do check your graphic settings after any major update from Microsoft. Now, first off, I want to say let's give kudos to Microsoft and Asobo for continuously updating this software. I think it's wonderful that they're listening to community feedback. I think it's wonderful that they're applying updates and they're making these changes. The one thing I don't think is so great is after each and every update or major update is they will reset your graphics settings in the simulator. So I decided before I do the, before I do the fly Tampa, scenery review of Las Vegas here. It's, by the way, great scenery. It's beautiful. We'll, uh, I'll cover it here um, later on um, in another post. But I thought, you know what? This has been really irritating. I want to make sure that my friend, fellow simmers out there know about this. I think many of you probably already do. But if you don't and you do an update to Microsoft Flight Simulator, you want to make sure to go back in and check that your settings haven't changed and reverted back. And look at this guy flying crazy over the airport here. But uh, so let's let's take a look at that. So I actually took screenshots before I did an update to the flight simulator. And so we're going to take a look at that. So as you can see here, I've got my graphic settings. Um, some of the things stayed, but many things didn't. And I think what Microsoft and Asoba are doing, and I, I can't completely blame them, although I kind of can, of changing it. They're trying to improve quality. But while they're doing that, they're also making the textures and the graphic settings different and reverting it back to what we like to have as our own settings for each of our machines. And I don't know if they're using some algorithm to determine this is the processor, this is the GPU, so we're going to set these graphic settings now after this update to this. I'm not sure yet. I need to do some research and see, you know, or maybe post even um, to Microsoft and Asobo their, on their bug reports about, hey, this is reverting back. And I, I will do that on our behalf, fans. But, um, but in any case, let's take a look at what happened. So I've left all the settings exactly the same since my last update so you can see what the differences are so let's take a look at this and and by the way i would you know there's probably better ways to do this i copied these and put these in word i just did screenshots of all my graphic settings so i could just easily revert back to those i would suggest that you all do the same um, it makes it as a good reference point of like what did you have when you got everything set up you know you got it tweaked you got it set up to how you like it okay now after an update how do we remember? There's so many settings. How do you remember what was actually set? Um, and so this is a good way to just, just do that. I'm sure there's better ways to do that. There's probably a log file you can export and that sort of thing. Um, but this was easy enough for me to do, so I just did it. So as you can see here, um, let's take a look at this first this first uh, screen of settings. So you can see we have the display mode is full screen, 3440 by 1440. I am using an Alienware 34-inch display that I got a year ago. Love it. Love it. Highly recommend it. Um, global running quality is custom because these, these settings change. VSync is off. It is a G-Sync monitor I'm using. If you're using a G-Sync monitor, definitely turn VSync off. That's another tip for you. If you don't, um, it can actually hinder your performance in games. So make sure you have that off. It's almost the opposite of what you would think. You'd think, oh, I have a G-Sync monitor. So I should put VSync on. No, it's actually the opposite. You want to have VSync turned off, not on when you have a G-Sync compatible monitor. Now, I won't get into what that means. Maybe another post I will. But uh, anyway, so moving on. So what I'm going to do is, is, is I'm going to switch back to Flight Simulator here. Okay. So keep in mind, I just updated the Flight Simulator. I haven't changed any of those settings. So that what we were looking before, that was what I had before the update. Okay. So we're going to go in. And we're going to check and see what the settings are. Okay, full screen, 3440. That all looks good. Custom and that. V-Sync's off. Great. 
Um, notice that, by the way, that frame rate limit will be off if your VSync is turned off because that will kind of basically unleash the gates of your FPS. Your graphics card will sync with your monitor and it'll go as fast as it can go, but it won't necessarily just stop at 60. Um, so anyway, render scaling is at 90. Okay. I think that's what I had before, but now look, the first thing I noticed is when I went in, you probably noticed this as well, is like, why does everything look like anti-aliasing isn't on? And if you're not sure what anti-aliasing is, it essentially smooths the lines out so you don't have the ladder effect in the, in the lines. It smooths everything out. Well, look, it, it's off. Okay, well, let's go back and see what did I have before? Oh, I had TAA for anti-aliasing. Oh, thanks, Microsoft. You reset that for me. So... Now that I know what I had before, I can hit TAA and go to it. Let's go back. Terrain, medium, medium, medium. So we have terrain vector data, buildings, trees, medium, 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 and then the grass off. Oh, terrain vector data actually is off. So I got to shoot that to change that to medium. I need to change my building to medium. What I have fans for trees, medium. So I got to change that to medium. Okay, so let's keep scrolling down. All right, um, and here I have grass and bushes that was off, so they'll leave that off. Um, so now I got to scroll down to my next screenshot. Object level detail was at 100. Now look at this object level detail. Thank you, Microsoft and Asobo. You took it all the way down for me. So I'm going to turn that back to 100. It was at 100 before. So I'm going to set that back to 100. Now I know you can't see my frame. I don't think you can see my frame rate counter, uh, counter there, but if you can, and I'm I'm running about 50 right now, so we'll see what kind of damage this does after I, I switch it. Uh, volumetric clouds low, texture resolution high, texture resolution low. Wow. Okay. Um, and anisotropic filtering. Um, actually, that was off before, but I actually want that on. Um, now looking at it and you can go up to 16, but, um, that gives you depth. So definitely want at least four. We'll do four for now. And let's see, texture, super sampling. Okay. So that was that actually, that's the part that I was talking about before that I found to fix the, uh, the lines. Um, and so this was actually an old screenshot from before. I didn't recapture this. That was probably back in November. I took that until I found out, Hey, this is a setting that can make your center lines look clear. So we, as I showed in another post, um, I like the four by four. I think that runs well for my computer. Um, texture, uh, texture super sampling. Uh, we did that. Okay. Texture synthesis low and low for water waves. That stays the same. Shadow 768 off for terrain shadows. Contact shadows low. Wind chill effects low. Contact shadows is actually turned off. So I'm going to turn that to low. Um, ambient occlusion is low and that was turned off. Um, reflections is low. That was turned off. <sighs> Light shafts is low. That was turned off and terrain shadows. Do we leave that off? Yeah, we left that off. Okay. Let's go to the next page. Shadow maps terrain. We talked about that. Okay. Uh, contact shadows. We talked about windshield effects low ambient occlusion. We talked about that reflection low. Sorry. I'm going back here. Light shafts low and bloom on. Bloom was off. Thank you, Sobo. Depth of field, off, motion blur off. Okay, well, at least we got those right, right? Yeah. Lens correction, off. Lens flare, on. Cockpit, cockpit refresh rate is medium. Uh, looks like they took some of the... Uh, huh, that's interesting. Looks like they took some of the uh, uh, AI stuff out of, of these settings. So... If anything, this if you take screenshots, you can see what the uh, Asobo is changing here. Glass, uh, the glass cockpit refresh rate medium. Okay, so now I got apply and, and save. So I went from 50 frames per second to 39, and now it's at 42. It dropped down to 35. Now it's at 37. So it's kind of kind of stabilizing right around the 38. I'll just call it 38 frames per second. So it did as you would expect. I mean, you're not. You, Law of nature, right, fans? You're not going to get something for nothing. I mean, I'm turning all these things on. I got to expect some impact. But you know what? I am willing to take a reduction of 10 frames per second. Now, granted, going from 50 to 40, you know, what is that, 20% uh, hit on frame rates? Okay, but I'm going to I'm gonna trade that 20% for the nice visuals. And as you can see, it looks a lot better now, too. So I just wanted to show everybody this tip. 
I didn't really mean and intend for this video to be this long, but the, the biggest thing I wanted to say is if you get your flight simulator tweaked to how you want it graphically, at least graphically it does this. Fortunately, controls appear to stay pretty much intact for your mappings, for your controls. But for graphics, do take some, just note them somehow. Take screenshots like I did, or if you want to just, you know, maybe just type what your, uh, your settings are and, and log what your settings are. But I just wanted to do this video to show you that, hey, if you wonder, I thought Microsoft's supposed to be improving this this uh, the simulator, but I do the update now. It looks horrible. That's probably why, fans. It go back in, change your settings back to where they were. Um, now I must say that you know Asobo, you know when they make changes to things, they could be code wise changing things to make them better. So you know, um, or maybe something's changed where they really you should go from maybe a high to a medium, or maybe from a medium to low because of the overall performance, because when they're coding this stuff, it is, as you can imagine, very, very complex. And so there may be reasons for them to do that. So what I'd recommend is just know what your settings are before your next major upgrade for Microsoft or before they patch it. And then after you do notice, hey, there's an update for my software, do go back in, check it out. Make sure that it is where you want it to be. So hopefully this has provided some value to all of you Flight Sim fans out there that uh, may have been wondering why is it every time or every so often I go in to a flight simulator, it looks horrible. You probably figured it out. It's probably an obvious thing. But if it isn't, do make sure to go back and change your settings. I think the biggest thing out of this video is just capture your settings if you have them. Make sure you know what they are before you update. All right, until next time, Sim fans, take care, stay safe. We'll catch you next time. Have a good one, Blue Skies.